since we did cover some of the interview that uh, this website did, this article did, um, might as well do the whole interview. They just released it um, today. Pokemon Go interview. Their Fantix talks routes, rural trainers, and remote raid passes. So if you're a rural player, then this interview is right for you. But before we dive right into this article, guys, and this interview, let's hear a few words from our sponsors that keep the lights going and keep the days going and to keep everything going. Hi guys, Arthur, owner of Camelot Shops. The majority of the shops that you see here will be owned by me. So if you're interested in either purchasing coins, raids, passes, or items in the shop, then you can come into the link in the description down below this video. The description, click, click it, click the link. The link will be my Discord server and Come and join us. You don't have to buy anything that you see here. You can just join us and have some fun. We are also introducing a new shop, the Stardust Farm Shop. If you're interested in collecting more Stardust, you don't want to be collecting mild, uh, collecting bunches and bunches of Pokemon, then you are, you are in luck. We have just opened up a Stardust Farm Shop. If you're interested, you can, like I said, go to the link in the description, click the link, my Discord, and you can join us. Also, if it's your first time purchasing, you'll get a promo. Well, you'll get an extra 500 coins on your first purchase. No matter what you purchase, you'll get an extra 500 coins. If you uh, purchase either a membership or a subscription on either two the two platforms uh, called YouTube or Twitch, and you'll have that promo for however long you stay a subscriber or a member. So either or. So if you bought a membership or a subscription and became a subscriber or a member on those on either of those two platforms, you don't have to be both. You can have just one or the other. Just let me know in the Discord and you'll get the extra 500 coins. Come, have some fun and join us on the Discord. Let's see what they have to say about, especially rural, rural trainers. I wonder what they'll, they'll say. At the recent Pokemon Go Fest 2023 event in London, I had the opportunity to speak to the game's developer, Nerfantic, about some of the biggest issues in the community right now, including the new route feature and the ongoing uh, remote raid pass controversy. Um, there's still people that are boycotting uh, Pokemon Go for that reason alone uh, and they have the right to you have the right to protest any wrongdoing that somebody done to you despite being seven uh, long years since it took the mobile game world by storm Pokemon Go is still going strong uh, and you can you can put that because of all this, the strong fan base that the Pokemon company built for Nerfantic to use for their game. This year alone has seen several exciting features introduced to the game to keep players engaged. The shadow like shadow raids, showcases, and a long awaited master ball. Guys if you don't if you didn't get the research guys uh, then I don't know how you, you'll be able to get the research but it's and I don't know what special research it is for the master ball, but uh, hopefully you got it. Finally, though, uh, there's an opportunity to get more. Seems like that's what some of the articles that I talked about the master ball uh, mentioned that. Another huge milestone was the UK first in-person Pokemon Go Fest event over an entire weekend. Thousands of trainers from all over the world flocked to London, Brockwell Park, to take part in event exclusive features and share the joyful experience with other, one another. <coughs> what about Osaka, right? Well, it's because uh, Nerfantic was mainly, I guess, in London. I guess there it was a, one of their biggest events for a very long time. 
That's not to say the game hasn't been, uh, had its issues, though. Uh, rural players are still struggling to take part in many new activities like routes and shadow raids. While the backlash over controversial remote raid passage changes continues to cast a shadow over parts of the community. Yeah, remotes, raids, and shadow issues. Like, like I said in the previous video, guys, there's been a lot of issues ever since... They've been introducing these new features, and ever since they have done uh, uh, the the nerfing of these remote raids, of those remote raids, they've been having an issue with everything that they introduced new to the game. Not not only routes, but also shadow raids, showcases. They're, they have been buggy when they are introduced. I have never seen a a company who has that type of uh, situation there. That type of thing, uh, um, where they have issues after issues after issues with something that they introduce worldwide. I don't know how. I don't know if how a company can do that too. I don't know. During a visit to Pokemon Go Fest 2023 in London, I was able to speak to Philip Mars, director of regional marketing, Ema and Kim Adams, Director of Art and Production, about the current state of the game and what we can expect in the future. Alright, this is finally getting to the meat and the potatoes of what they're talking about. What do you think is the, the important the importance of having in-person events like GoFest in London? And this is what Philip said. Philip. What's up, Phil? Real life gathering are really at the core of Nerfantic as a company, but also Pokemon Go as a product because it's the best way for us to achieve our three principles, which are uh, exercise, exploration, and real world social. All of this is something we can experience today. Exercise. Um, people can exercise in their own time. If people use a game to exercise, come on, man. Come on, man. You could have done that, like, for 30 minutes. You can do, like, a 30-minute exercise. The sun is shining. You just made your way here. Went past thousands of trainers who are having a joyful, joyful day, both from a physical point of view, getting in to engage with so many photo opportunities that are Pokemon brand specific or specific to the things that we care about. Bringing uh, people's, uh, people together like at the trading post or making them engage with the local communities at, that, at the community hub or challenging other trainers at the battleground or just hanging out at the team lounges or strolling around and exploring, making progress on the in-game experience we put together. All that is a, is a st testament and the best example of how we can support the original purpose of what Pokemon Go was built for. For you to go outside and, and exercise and, and enjoy the world and see other people, meet strangers, and... Um, Meet the community. We are mainly concerned with bringing people together in the real world and making them explore and experience their immediate environment through different ways, different eyes. And I don't know why you couldn't do that in 2020, in 2021, and 2022 without remote raids, right? No, it's because nobody was going to get outside and go outside because they were locked in their homes. So they, they needed to find a way to make money. And remote raids was a, a, a source of income. The eyes doesn't only mean the phone in this regard, but also the eyes in regard to meeting fellow trainers along the way or others who aren't actively engaged with the game. And this is why we couldn't be more lucky or fort fortunate to be here today in partnership with the local city 
um, council today is a great confirmation also that is this is the right path to go down for the future looking around and realizing that there are tens of thousands of trainers playing today both in the park and in the city pokemon go is all around you we are going we're doing anything we can do we can to bring these live experience in the real world close to the communities from all over the world a sentiment sentiment i hear quite a lot in the community is that in-person events like this are great and playing in a big city is great but if you live in a rural location there is no there's not that much to do is this something nerfantic takes into consideration and are there any plans to make the game more enjoyable for rural trainers okay guys this is for rural trainers this is very very interesting what they're going to say about you rural uh, rural players which i am one of them i don't have I only have one Pokestop and one gym, so I am part. I am a role player. Philip, this is what Philip said. Absolutely, being as in inclusive as possible is definitely top of mind for us, because Pokemon Go is supposed to be a game for everyone. We yes, everyone. Pokemon trainer tips, even for this dis disabled people. We have always looked into developing features that address the needs of the needs and interests of players from all locations, no matter if they are living in a dense city area or somewhere more rural. Since Pokemon Go is also based on the quite a use, user driven content approach. Where you provide the Poke Stops to be reviewed. There's a, an obvious reason for the there to be higher density in metropolitan areas than in rural areas. But with features like routes, uh, raid pass passes, daily oh no, not routes, but remote raid passes, daily adventure incense, all of these kinds of things we have who also uh, also accounted for the special needs and interest to account for the fact that they feel under under uh, under deserved in that way. On top of that, from a more community gathering standpoint, we are supporting more and more these. Uh, community ambassador programs where we invite players from all locations globally to bring their community together and raise awareness of Pokemon Go and support this social aspect of the game. This is something that has no limitation or is tied to a metropolitan area only. So trainers in rural areas also have the opportunity to explore local parks and go to areas where the density might be higher. Yeah. They're saying like you can, you real players can just get your butt up and go to the nearest densest area. You don't have to stay where you are. Waste your gas to play a game. Go waste your gas. Go waste your gas money and go play a game for a day. We are definitely committed to looking into features and opportunities to support that. We have just delivered on that again with the release of routes, something that is also addressing th that need and desire, supporting both individual gameplay and group gameplay, or no matter where people are in the world. Hopefully, he they, this person asks, like, okay, it's, I don't know how you are celebrating this thing when there's issues with this new feature hmm 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 I noticed a lot of people saying that they don't have any routes in their local area and they're not able to uh, create them either what's the plan for those trainers what I would say like what was the ideal because you told us 
if they actually went after and gone after uh, Neurofrantic for real because you have to challenge these people. You got to give them hard questions. Um, I would have said, hey, um, you promised this when we talked, like when you introduced this to us, when we reviewed it for you. Why is this, this not happening? You're supposed to have an, a bot that's supposed to uh, look it up, uh, not look it up, but review the, the route, and it should be done in a 24 hours. Why is it not, why is that not, not happening? Hmm? This is Kim. Kim, so Philip didn't want to answer that. <laughs> Kim, like, no, I got this, I got this, Philip. It would be impossible to just turn on that feature where ev everywhere across the globe, right? We were blown away by the amount of interest in creating a route. So we're trying to accelerate the approval process as quickly as possible. It's been three weeks, guys. It's been three, four weeks since the introduction. And has it been, a, been has the approval process increased? Hmm. I don't think so, right? Let me know in the comment section, guys. Has the approval process for these routes impro uh, increased? So we can uh, see accelerate the approval process as quickly as possible, so we can make it a lot more accessible. I will say though that during the first few weeks, we had routes walked mu walked millions of times already. So so is it topic of discussion every day i wonder how much data that is you got to show the receipts on that when we need you have the facts on that you have the evidence on that if you have like already a million routes walked how can we increase access and how quickly can we move forward with that there's a ton tone of interest and everyone is really anxious to use that feature the feature itself brings a whole new value to the game i don't think so i don't think so but if the other people are interested in routes then that's good for you it's the first ugc feature trainers can help other trainers explore better so you can see a town through the eyes of a local it's a long-awaited feature so it's something that we are very dedicated basically uh, well, let me finish this very dedicated to making better and more uh, robust as quickly as possible everywhere so the route only works if somebody's actually visiting visiting the place like like if you're a first time visitor and you want to look scope out the area then the route would help you out <laughs> scope out the area you mentioned remote raid passes as a feature that benefits rural players earlier, but there's been a, quite a lot of controversy about changes to those items. Some people have even called for boycotts. What the, what has Nerfantic learned from that backlash? All right, this is the remote raid stuff, guys. Now Philip is gonna take over. Like, Kim, let me got, I got this, Kim, I got this. All right, I think the main learning here is that there's still so much excitement and engagement and dedication to the game. There's a certain way the community got to enjoy the game during the pandemic. Specifically, it's in the nature of humans that, whatever, that whenever you make changes to something